Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, Jason. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about sliding barn doors, and we'd like to thank Mike Horn for liking and sharing the podcast. We got a couple five-star ratings on Apple Podcasts, but no one left a name. We really appreciate it. And we got a new four-star and five-star review for our latest ebook. And no one left a name, but we appreciate that too. And you can check out our new home improvement ebook on Amazon. It's called Home Improvement Solutions: What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 14. Sliding doors on barns became popular with farmers to cover a large opening in the barn so they could bring in livestock or crops, rather than having two large doors that had to swing over a large area. It was much easier to stand in the opening and hold back livestock and slide the door closed. The original look of barn doors with vertical boards held together with horizontal boards on the top and bottom and sometimes having a diagonal brace, was easy to build for farmers without a lot of carpentry skills. I don't understand why it's called a sliding barn door, because when you think of a barn, especially (laughs) being from the Midwest and Illinois, I mean, as soon as you get out of the Chicago and suburbs, I mean, it's all cornfields. A barn, they're all weathered looking and old, you know, big breeze would just knock them over. Right. So why is it called a barn door? What's funny is now, a sliding barn door is more of a term for a door on a metal track that slides open, hugging the wall. So couldn't it just be a sliding door? Why do we have to put barn in there? Because right. <laughs> a lot of, I mean, you showed me a lot of these doors, and right. they're modern looking. Absolutely. With, they have glass yeah. panels, some of yeah. them. wide range of styles and colors. Nothing like a barn door. I think they're trying to differentiate between, like, pocket doors and, okay, you know. But a pocket door goes into a pocket. <laughs> All right. This doesn't have anything to do with a barn. Yeah, this is kind of the term they use. I disagree with this term. You know, I looked at Home Depot, and if you put in barn door, there's over a thousand results. If you put in a search for barn door kit, there's over 800 results. And and the barn door kits have the door and all the hardware. At Lowe's, there's over 700 results when you search for a barn door. So it's a popular style. And like you said, these styles aren't like a cabin-looking door some of these are very modern looking. Mm-hmm. Hence my problem with this. <laughs> Most barn doors are wood, but there are composite, PVC, vinyl, and steel doors. You can get lightweight hollow core doors to make installation easier. You can purchase a slab door and the sliding barn door hardware separately if you want to match a style in your home or you want to match the door to your furniture or if you just want something unique like frosted glass panels in the door. What's a slab? So a slab door is just the door with no hinges attached or there's no mortises cut into the sides. Some slab doors will have holes pre-drilled for a doorknob and you wouldn't want that style for a barn door. Right. If you like to work with wood, you can build your own door and attach barn door hardware. You can get reclaimed lumber from old homes or barns to make a door with some history and character. A friend of ours made two barn doors out of old bleachers from a school, Hmm. and he hung them with sliding door hardware he got from Amazon, and they're pretty cool looking. I'll put up a couple pictures on our Instagram on Monday, and he used a magnetic lock on one of the doors to keep it closed. Yeah, looks nice. If you're building your own barn door and adding decorative hardware, check out No Weld Ornaments. They're at doorstuds.com. It's D-O-O-R. S-T-U-D-S dot com. They make handmade, hand-painted, lightweight resin ornaments that look like metal studs or straps, Mm -hmm. and they're very easy to attach. They look cool, too. Since a barn door slides open on a metal rail, it's great for confined areas or an area where you want furniture, but the swing of a traditional door would get in the way or block your furniture. Mm -hmm. You can have a barn door slide behind it. If you have a home with an open floor plan and openings without a door, a sliding barn door can give you privacy when you want it, and then it can be left open to show off the open design. Plus, it'll add color and shape to the wall it's against for another design element. Mm -hmm. 
My cousin did this. He built an addition. It's like a family room, dining room, and kitchen, all open floor plan. Right. And he built a second living room, kind of reading office slash office area. Okay. Off his dining room, and he put the barn doors in there, and it looks really nice. Yeah. What's great about a sliding barn door is you can get a door to cover unusual sized openings, like in an open floor plan or an older home, and they're not difficult to install. It doesn't require precise measurement like a traditional door. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage of a barn door is you need enough wall space to slide your door over, and you wouldn't want to cover outlets or switches. A barn door isn't going to have a tight fit like a traditional door. The door is set off the wall about an inch so it can slide without hitting baseboard or trim, and it's going to be slightly wider than the opening or the door casing, and generally they don't have a lock. Right. I spoke to RealCraft USA, and they're at realcraft.com. It's R-E-A-L-C-R-A-F-T dot com. They sell barn doors and hardware, and they shared some information on different barn door systems. With a single barn door, the door track is usually mounted to the wall, but there are ceiling mount tracks. For proper operation, the track should be twice as long as the door width and have enough wall space so you can completely slide the door open. Mm -hmm. Double doors are also called bipart sliding doors. Generally, it's going to be one track, but you can have two tracks if you have very heavy doors. The doors close by sliding toward each other, and they open by sliding away from each other, and each door needs enough wall space next to it to fully open. So that takes up a lot of room. Right. So if you have a large opening with limited wall space, you can get bypass sliding doors, and these generally have two tracks that allow one door to slide over the other door. With this type of sliding door system, you don't need the open wall space next to the door. Okay. Double doors are great for large openings like a living room, a master bedroom, or an office. They can be used as a divider between spaces or openings in an open floor plan. One door can be used primarily to open and close and pass through, while the other door can be used as a partition. Mm. RealCraft said a common mistake is not considering the privacy of a space like right. a bathroom before you install it. <laughs> from, no lock. Right. Yeah, most of them don't have a lock, although there are privacy locks that can be added to a barn door. For more privacy, they say have the overlap wider. A solid door is going to be better at soundproofing, and you can add weather strip to the door casing and put a sweep on the bottom of the door. Hmm. Interesting. Another mistake is not measuring properly. The door should have at least one inch overlap on each side of the frame or casing, and the more overlap you have, the less light and sound that's going to come through the edges. Two inches on each side is even better. For the height, you want to measure from the floor to the top of the door casing and then add an inch. For the width, measure from the outside edge of the casing on one side to the outside edge of the casing on the other side, then add two inches minimum. The track size should be at least double the width of your door so the entrance will be completely uncovered when the door is open. Okay. You should have about six inches above the opening, but check the installation instructions on the hardware you're going to be using. The distance between the bottom of the door and the floor is usually a half an inch to an inch. And if you're buying the door and the hardware separately, make sure to match the thickness of your door to your hardware. The specifications should give the maximum and minimum door thicknesses and the weight capacity. It should also let you know how far the track comes out from the wall for the thickness of your door and clearance for baseboard and trim. Hmm. To attach the rail to your wall, you're going to use spacers and lag bolts to screw into the studs. For heavy doors, or to give more space between the wall and the door, or to make the connection more secure, you can screw a support board onto the wall first, and then attach your rail to the board. And that board is usually called a backer board, a support header, or a ledger board. Some kits are going to come with a rail support board. Some tracks have pre-drilled holes 16 inches apart, so you can attach it to wall studs. Some have different spacing, so you're forced to install a support board. Hmm. 
If you're remodeling a room where you're putting in a barn door, you can add wood blocking between the studs for the hardware. If you're putting in a barn door on a concrete wall, you're going to be using concrete anchors. When you're planning your project, if you're going to be adding your own wood support board for the track, you can match the wood, the paint, or the stain to your door or your casing. You can also remove the top casing and create a head casing that would blend into the side casing. A wood track support is screwed into more studs, so you're going to be able to carry more weight and not damage the drywall. There are anti-crush rings that you can get if you don't want a support board. You drill a hole with a spade bit through the drywall to the stud, you clean out the drywall, and you put this ring into the hole. Then you put your rail spacer over the ring and bolt down the rail. This is going to give you a strong connection, and there's no drywall to crush. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Yes. The most common hardware to hold your door is a pair of straps with wheels that are bolted to the top of the door. The straps are decorative and are usually on the outside of the door so you can see them, mm -hmm. but there are styles that attach to the back of the door or to the top of the door for a more modern look. Okay. When you're comparing models, if you see hush wheels, it's H-U-S-H, -H, this is a polymer insert that goes over the wheel to eliminate the metal-on-metal -metal sound between the track and the wheel. Oh, that's nice. Soft stop hardware slows down the door when it comes close to the end of the track, and some door kits will come with these. And you're also going to have adjustable door stops with your kit so your door doesn't slide off the end of the rail. <laughs> the doors will generally have a raised pull on the outside and a recessed or surface mount pull on the inside of the door. Okay. You're also going to see anti-jump discs. Well, what's that? These set on top of the door, and it prevents the door from jumping off the track. And generally, these are shaped so you can turn them to put your door on or take it off, oh, okay. and then twist it and kind of lock your door on the track. Nice. Realcraft says always use a floor guide to keep the door from hitting the wall or the baseboard, and this is going to keep your door from swinging back and forth. Hmm, I was wondering about that. And there's also wall mount kits. So if you have tile or a cement floor and you don't want to drill into the floor, a T-guide has a tab that fits up into a slot cut into the bottom edge of the door. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much invisible when your door is opening and closing. A wall mount roller has a roller on the outside of the door that keeps it in place. There's also a floor mount roller. A C-guide is C-shaped or U-shaped. And this is on both sides of the door to lock it in that channel. There's also an adjustable C-guide. And if you're buying the hardware separately, you want to match the door thickness to your guides. You did some very nice drawings here, JC. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to take a picture of that and put yes, that on Instagram? Yes, Instagram. <laughs> Do you have any tips for installing a sliding barn door? They're pretty easy to install, especially if you get a kit with all the hardware. And if you're comparing kits... A door that has the pre-drilled holes makes it even easier. Right. So the first thing you would do is bolt the top straps to the top of the door, and if it has pre-drilled holes, you're just going to use a wrench with a smooth jaw, and that way you're not going to mar the finish if you have decorative caps that are painted. You can also put paper over the caps to help prevent it from being marred. Then you're going to screw on your anti-jump discs to the top of the door and make sure they're twisted so you can attach it to the rail. Right. If you don't have pre-drilled holes for the top straps, check where the instructions want them mounted, usually around two inches from the sides of the door. And you can use the straps as a guide to drill the holes. You can use a speed square to position the strap if it has straight sides, and then hold it tight to the door with a clamp. Some top-rated speed squares are from Johnson Level, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, Swanson, S-W-A-N-S-O-N, -S and Empire, E-M-P-I-R-E. -E. Some top-rated wood clamps come from Jorgensen, J-O-R-G-E-N-S-E-N, Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, and DeWalt, D-E, capital W-A-L-T. And I like the trigger clamps. The jaws are usually rubberized and padded, and it has a trigger to tighten the jaw, so you can do this with one hand. Easy to use. The instructions will have the measurement for the height of the track. If you aren't using a wood track support, you can use the track as a template 
and mark where you're going to be anchoring it to the studs. You'd use a stud finder to mark the stud locations on the wall, and then you're going to screw the track to the wall with spacers between the track and the wall. Some top-rated stud finders come from Zircon, Z-I-R-C-O-N, Franklin, F-R-A-N-K-L-I-N, and Ryobi, R-Y-O-B-I. You're going to need a level for this project. Some top-rated levels come from Johnson Level, Empire, and Craftsman. And this project's going to be easier with two people when you're putting up your rail or if you're installing a wood track support. And if you're installing a wood track support, you're going to screw that to your studs first, and then you're going to screw the track to the wood with the spacers between the wood and the track. Okay. Once the track's in place, you're going to lift up the door onto the track, adjust your... That's probably the hardest part. <laughs> right, right. Get a helper. Well, unless you have a hollow core door. Then you're going to adjust the stoppers on the end of the track, secure your anti-jump discs on the top of the door, and attach the door guide to the floor or the wall, then you're going to put on your door pulls. And that's just kind of a general overview. There are quite a few videos online. You'll get more detail from the instructions. Right, for your specific model. For older homes, make sure the floor is level and adjust the door height to the high side. And check that the wall is plumb. You can use a thicker wood track support to get the door away from baseboard or trim. Okay. Some top-rated barn door retailers online, realcraft.com, R-E-A-L-C-R-A-F-T.com, customslidingbarndoors.com, and it's spelled just like it sounds, <laughs> Artisan Hardware, that's A-R-T-I-S-A-N, and thebarndoorstore.com. Do you have anything else, Dan? We'd like to thank Realcraft for helping us with this episode. And on their YouTube channel, they have a video showing how to install a barn door with a support header in an opening that doesn't have a wall area above the opening. So it's open above the header when you install it, which is pretty interesting. Cool. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 14 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please give us a five star rating and review. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at Fixit Cohost. You can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. And you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you